Walking after whiskey could cause serious side effects. Proceed with caution. This is for you, Debbie, baby. Bless Don't bend over, just look down. Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> that is a pussy! It's a hairy... <laughs> you got a hairy pussy and a dick on the side of your head. <laughs> what? Welcome everyone to Walking After Whiskey with Trevor and Travis. I'm Trav. I'm Trev. We're going to break down your latest episode of The Walking Dead tonight. We're going to break down a fine, wonderful, fine. I almost almost <laughs> said it without laughing, a, a great bottle of whiskey here for you guys. We're just going to give you a review of a whiskey. We don't know if anybody <laughs> likes it, but we're going to give it a shot. <laughs> we got a great episode for you guys tonight. We're going to break down season seven, episode 13, entitled Bury Me Here. And we're going to go over and have ourselves a nice little fun drinking game. Mm. You ready for that tonight? Do my homework, baby. All right, good. You're going to need it. Reviews. <laughs> Let's get right into the review, Trevor. Um, first thing we want to talk about is Carol and her coming around. Um, we see her sitting up in her room, uh, tossing and turning, smoking cigarettes, lighting lanterns, and just thinking what it really meant, the cryptic things that Daryl and uh, Morgan told her about what happened in Alexandria. Well, she's been secluded for so long, telling nobody to bother her. Morgan's been covering for her, this and that. You see her at the beginning of the episode asking Morgan what what really happened over there. And he says, ah, you know what, you and Daryl talked, so you need to talk to Daryl about that, and he's going to give you that answer. And he just kind of shrugging her off and said, look, I covered for you. I've been telling these people the whole time that you're not here, and so you need to not ask me this and, you know, Ask Daryl. Remember when uh, when Daryl and Glenn and they were all caught in the wo in the woods with Rosita, they were trying to find Carol. You know, this is kind of her fault. And so I don't know if she knows that aspect of why they were out there. But as much as she wants to be left alone and get to her, her own devices, um, she's finding out more and more in her own self that she is part of a family and she is part of the Atlanta Five. And she does care about these people and will kill for them. And now she's kind of mustering her, her chops up to get ready to fight. Yeah, so the second thing we're seeing is uh, the big bad exchange here. Oh. You see uh, old Dick Nose Richard. You guys never know. <laughs> Richard Nose. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Nose. When that light hits his nose, man. It looks like an upside down pecker right there, man. Uh, that's pretty funny. But He's uh, upside down all the time, so he just, I don't know that. Very right, much. right. <laughs> <laughs> so you see him looking at these shopping carts and stuff, and, and you see the area he's looking in. You see the yellow bin and stuff, and something significant about it. It's like, what the hell's going on here? And we heard about a betrayal that's going to happen. Yeah. And this seems to be it. Uh, they go to exchange, and they only got eleven melons instead of twelve. And uh, they uh, order all their guns. He takes their guns, and then, boom! They they shoot the kid because they don't have the melons. He's the one that hid the melon. Didn't hide the cucumber. Hid the melon. In the beginning of the episode, we see them loading up one barrel at a yeah. tied-down crate. Very cryptic. Like, what is really going on here? Everyone's very somber. Future and we, we find we find out later. Yeah, the, the, the foreshadowing. We find out later what happened. Yeah, there you go. And um, it was uh, the the exchanges have been very tense lately. And the guy keeps calling out Ezekiel, saying we're we're light, we're short, when they haven't been. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, I don't know if he's pushing. He's and obviously the the tension between Richard and his right hand man is causing a lot of problems with them. And obviously Ezekiel because they're not just bowing down and looking down. They're obviously giving their things over, but unwillingly. So it's like, you know, it's a very, it's a very tense exchange. And it's been, they've been getting more tense and more tense. And last time he said, next time, if he's, like, if he's here and it's like this, it'll become very visceral. Yeah, and uh, Dick knows up the bat first. Yeah, that, that's exactly what he said. Yeah. And so after this happens, they go home. Poor kid bleeds out. And uh, Morgan oh. is just losing his shit. 
He's yeah. he's walking around where they stop. He's, he's thinking there's something's up. Something's up with that roadblock with the arrows. The basket's pointing as an arrow, and uh, so he's walking around and he's having flashbacks of clearing. And I think I'm, I was thinking, hey, the old Morgan's coming back. He's about to fuck some shit up. Yeah, I started kind of piecing together. Was um, sometimes I'll watch a show after I watched the show one time. I'll watch it second time for uh, questions for Trevor, and I noticed when Richard was burying uh, what well, was digging his own grave. Um, there was a line of shopping carts on the side of his house. And I'm like, what is all that for? And later on, I see shopping carts blocking the road. And, and I couldn't piece it together until the very end what was going on. And it was really crazy when, when Morgan just had to just, just, just anger, just kicks a barrel over and there's a cantaloupe right underneath, underneath that, yellow, that yellow barrel. And it, it, that made him come unraveled. He was just like, just didn't know what was going on. But that part, he knew someone was messing something up. Yep. And so he goes back into old Dick Nose's room and throws the, throws the uh, yellow recycling bin in there and you know he ain't gonna deny it then and says hey man he said i was up to bat i was gonna lose my life for this cause i think to make ezekiel fight so he was gonna lose his life and he told a nice warming story about how he lost his wife and his daughter and stuff and so he, he said i thought i was gonna be me and uh, morgan's he's... sitting there like he's gonna <laughs> kill somebody and shit and then uh sure enough um, yeah, Richard set it up to be him. He said he knew he was up to bat. He knew they already hated him. And he knew that if he's caused any problems by going there, it was going to be him. Yeah. And when it wasn't him, you see his face just like, the whole the whole time afterwards, the whole exchange. My plan didn't go through. Yikes! <laughs> yeah, right? It was like, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Definitely. <laughs> and then, uh, so on the next exchange, I mean, he gets his wish. I mean, he, he goes up there and they give him that one cantaloupe that we've seen him load up. And then, uh, as he's saying, he said, look, guys, we get it. Richard's whole plan to tell them is, hey, we understand you guys, and then to strike behind him. And as soon as he was saying that, Morgan grabs his old karate stick and says, wah, 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 and strangles his ass out dead. Yeah, dead. And Negan's guys, they had to be a little little scared there. Just they watch. Like, they're not used to that. People killing each other, they're, they're used to them doing the killing and stuff. So. Everyone put their guns down and just watch in horror as Morgan's like, oh, wow. And then even when Ezekiel leaves, like, Morgan, come on, you don't need to be alone. He's like, man, I just said, leave me alone. <laughs> He's like, nobody's fucking with old Morg right now. So. Yeah, he told Ezekiel what had happened. The whole thing was his fault. And Ezekiel kind of, like, was processing all of this. And Ezekiel, you can tell now, looks like he's ready to be more militant. In the comic books, um, you know, uh, Ezekiel is very fast to join Rick, Rick's, Rick's army. Ezekiel's been waiting for a long time for someone to come along and get everyone together. But Ezekiel, obviously, is a very, very calm and relaxed person uh, in, this, in, in this show. And so it's, it, took, it took the breaking of one of their youngest, a guy that his dad he knew very well, right in front of him to, to make him want to change and to fight Negan. And to touch back on one thing you were saying about uh, Carol being a part of the group, when the kid got shot, Ezekiel took her to Carol's house. I think it must be the oh. first house as they're entering. He says, hey, sorry about this, but I think he's trying to pull her in too just in case they have to fight. Maybe it's a subliminal thing or whatever, but it was a good move because then the next thing we're talking about is uh, – Morgan goes up after he kills old Dick Nose and knocks on Carol's door and says, do you want to know what happened in Alexandria? Do you want to know what happened? He only has to ask her twice. She says, yeah. He tells her. She's like, oh, oh, oh. and uh, take it from there. Yeah, the last scene we see Carol, um, she goes, she, walk up, she walks up to the um, kingdom. She clears the streets out. And she walks, in, she walks into the kingdom and looks at Ezekiel on the ground planting some flowers or planting some kind of, some kind of crops with a child. And um, she goes, well, we have to get ready. We have to fight. And Ezekiel is, you know, kind of calling back to what she said when she's planning her plans. He, he goes, yeah, yeah, not, not today. We will, we will. not today. And I think they're, uh, were they making a memorial for the kid or burying him? Uh, the smoky tires. It looked like it was. Well, the tires were there. I don't, I don't know because they kind of were the same, the same kind of blocks, and there were tires on both sides. I don't yeah. know if that. I don't think compost. I've never really seen that sure. before. Yeah, it was uh, kind of crazy. This yeah, yeah. part of the kingdom. But I want to hammer home, um, they, they, they all kind of brought up these facts of uh, they were always waiting for someone to come help them. Uh, Richard brought up how he was with his daughter and his wife and with his daughter for three days, and no one came to save them. Uh, Morgan obviously couldn't save his son from, he couldn't shoot his wife, to, the, who actually ended up fighting his son. And so we're, man, yeah. we're seeing a huge, a huge theme of everyone is waiting for someone to do something. And now they have to, they've all realized that, hey, we have to do it. We have to step up. We are I'm the ones sure that you guys come. agree when this if we're getting all getting tired of this shit like we're getting bullied. It's like we're watching a fucking episode of Roots, man. It's <laughs> like everybody's just getting fucked up. No doubt. And uh, so hopefully, hopefully don't lead. They don't lead us up to the end of this season with now they're planning to fight. It's like everybody has their own little plan to fight, but nothing's happening yet. They will. It's still it's still it up. 
They quit cotton balling in us and fucking. They still have Oceanside to get. They still have to get the garbage pail kids. Uh, there's still a lot of people to, to gather up with their weapons before they could they head on. But believe me, next season is going to be nuts, man. We're talking Negan rolling in on a diesel on, on the on the hood of it. So believe me, it's, it'll be well worth the wait. Um, good review, buddy. All right, let's so review this good yeah. fine whiskey here. <laughs> Everybody, here's some actual facts on how whiskey is actually good for you. Whiskey fact number 67. You stressed out? It's a stress destroyer. Ah, oh, get out of your stress! Get out! Fine or good, one of them would, would would have been fine with me. Um, so I think we 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 actually touched on last time about whiskeys and just how popular they are these days, and bourbons especially a little sweeter, um, should be a little a little more refined. Um, but we're finding out that um, a lot of these new all these new labels aren't waiting long enough to let their babies mature to be nice young women. This bottle <laughs> in particular, and I quote right off the bottle: "Distilled and aged in Rebel Yell Distillery in." Uh, Louisiana. Um, it does not say how long it's been distilled for or aged for, you know. Right. Um, so this is a aged two days off the Safeway shelf. And that's what it tastes like. Um, it's, I mean, let's taste it. <laughs> um, who do you think would drink a whiskey like this on The Walking Dead? A fucking zombie. <laughs> <laughs> or Bob, because Bob was a drunk, right? So we'll yeah. say Bob, zombie Bob, or that, zombie. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 Bob. Well, he, he, he's a fine taster. He grabbed a bottle of Hennessy off that shelf. Hey, 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 you know, that ain't here. too bad, so. I don't know, man. I would say I would say that a zombie would drink this shit because he's already dead, and hopefully his guts are hanging out because this going through the guts needs to air out a little bit. It's very few of me. It's good mixing whiskey. A uh, good mixing whiskey. Get a coke. Get a bottle of this. Go to the movies. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I tried it with lemonade, and it was pretty good. It was nice. all right. <laughs> I poured it on my ribs as I was cooking them. Yeah, marinade. <laughs> oh no, I just seared them at the end. Just gave them that nice. <laughs> all right, right good on. Review.